Hey guys, it's Steph here with The Flower Fanatic. I hope you guys are having a great day, a great gardening day. Anyways, it is fall here now and we are experiencing beautiful temperatures around 70 degrees. The next few weeks, it's gonna be like that. The temperatures are dropping about 47 degrees at night. Um, normally we have a freeze by now in October, but it's just been beautiful weather. I am gonna take it, I am loving it. The vegetable garden is lasting forever. We still have a bunch of tomatoes that we can harvest, but it is almost time to start ripping all of this out and start prepping for spring blue. So this year, the gardening season was a little much for me. I overdid it with what I wanted to do in my brain. I couldn't get to it all. And so I just want to make next year a little bit easier for me. So I want spring blooms that are beautiful, but have low maintenance, greater ease so that when spring hits, I can really enjoy these blooms without feeling overwhelmed. But of course, I still have a million projects left to do in the next month before it gets really cold. I have a bunch of tulip bulbs I'm going to plant. So there's a lot of prep work, but I don't need to plant my tulips for another month. But the seeds that I bought online, I wanted to show you each one, recommend them. I can actually just throw them in the ground. They're cold hardy. They'll survive through the winter. And then in spring, they'll have nice root systems and they'll just come up in the ground. <laughs> my goal is to avoid having to grow them in the greenhouse, um, having to hardy them off, bring them inside, outside. That is just a little bit more tedious than I like, but I am going to also grow seeds in the greenhouse. Of course I will, like zinnias, stuff that is a little bit easier. I also found that when I bought some spring flowers from the nursery, they just didn't like my climate as much as I would have liked. We have too much up and down weather in the spring, and so I'd have to actually, it was kind of silly, I'm kind of laughing about it, but I had to take the spring plants that I put in my pots outside in the greenhouse at night sometimes, I'm like in and out, so definitely weren't really spring hardy. And so these ones are gonna be great. I can just really enjoy them, not worry about if they're getting too cold at night or if the weather's gonna get too cold and dip down, it's gonna be great. So let's talk about these seeds. So this is my husband's territory. He loves the garden. This is where he gets to do his thing. He's so nice and lets me just take over the entire rest of the yard. Um, but I did ask him if I could plant some seeds in here and I was going to make sure that they were out of here. The flowers were gone before he had to put in his vegetables. So that's a great idea. These are great ones that you can take out um, when it's ready to start putting in your vegetables. And then I'm gonna plant some in here, right here. The tomatoes are still going strong, so I gotta clear out this area. But look at that hollyhock. <laughs> I grew that by seed in the greenhouse and it has literally been blooming nonstop for months upon months and it is still going strong. I think that I'm gonna just grow fresh ones every single year and put them along the side of my greenhouse right there. I do like them in the shade a little bit more because they're a little bit bushier, they don't get quite as tall and they just look a little bit more abundant. Um, it's just gonna keep blooming. Look at all of those new ones. I don't know if you can see them, one, two, three. They're just gonna keep coming. So no powdery mildew, it was great. Um, so I've gotta clear out some of these jalapenos. There's so many of those. And then I'm gonna try and use this box and another box right here. And I'm gonna plant a few other flowers in my cutting garden over here with some of my seeds. Um, that I can't rip out before I have to put in the vegetables. So let's talk about these seeds finally. I'm sorry, I'm leaving you hanging. I'm gonna be planting Snapdragon. It's a cold hardy annual. It's considered a cold hardy annual, but in my climate, I've seen them overwinter like crazy. Um, the key with your Snapdragon is just to kind of protect them if it's not supposedly supposed to overwinter. So I'm gonna cover it with maybe some straw, some mulch, something to keep them warm. And so that is something I can plant right now. They like to germinate in about 70 degree temperature um, and it's not getting too cold at night. So I'm hoping I can start actually getting some root systems before it turns really cold and it's winter. So in this video, I'm just kind of planning. I'm not actually gonna be planting all of these right now. That's gonna be in a week or two when I get all of this ready. I will definitely show you that video, me planting all of them. I really like Johnny seeds. So this is the early sunrise mix and they get pretty tall. I have to show you back here. Um, they get about 36 inches tall. So the next one I'm gonna plant is Larkspur. I've never grown this before, but when I was driving around this spring about, I guess, oh gosh, I cannot believe how fast this gardening season is going by. It just seemed like I was looking at these beautiful flowers, but they were just so nice and tall. They had this bright blue, beautiful color. They were nice and full and they just popped up, it seemed like, out of nowhere. So they bloom spring to early summer. Um, they don't like the hot weather here, so that's kind of when they die off and start to fizzle. So they're kind of considered a perennial. They're definitely cold hardy um, in my climate, but they just don't like the heat. So Larkspur is a close relative of Delphinium. It has those beautiful tall spikes. They're not quite as big, and the leaves are a little bit more feathery-like, and they're great for cutting. 
And the next one I'm gonna plant is Iceland poppy. These are so cool. I love poppies. They are perennials in my climate. So I'm just gonna put them in one of these garden boxes back here and rip them up as soon as they're done blooming. They come out in early spring. Um, they might bloom a little bit longer. My husband might have to wait just a little bit on that one <laughs> before he can start putting in his vegetables. But honestly, by then he's not quite ready to use all of his garden boxes and I think it's gonna be okay. But with my snapdragons that have peach colors, some pinks and some whites with the Iceland poppies. I have the sherbet variety, so let's take a look at it real quick. I got these ones from Floret Flower. This is the sherbet mix, so it's a little bit more pink and peach, and I can't quite remember, but it's a beautiful one. And then you have your pastel meadows. So they look pretty similar. They just are full of pinks, yellows, and peachy colors. And they're just really have that beautiful spring color that you're looking for, bright and cheery, and they just are gonna flow in the wind so nicely. So they don't get as tall. They only get 15 to 18 inches tall. Um, they do like the full sun. So I never know why they say annual or biennial. I guess that's just the way she treats it. But And with these, as soon as the heat sets in, they just start to fizzle. So I'll pull those out the minute they are done blooming. Last but not least, I'm going to be planting Feverfew. I think this is the cutest flower. I didn't get to plant it this year and I was so jealous when I saw people have them online or had them in their own gardens. I knew I needed to put it in my own yard. So it's kind of like a miniature cute little white daisy and there's just so many of them. So this is the Vegmo single variety. So look at them. Small white button like flowers with yellow centers. Beautiful in the garden and in the bouquets. So all of these ones that I'm growing are good for cutting and see right here it says a cold season hardy annual which is always so interesting when they say annual that can be kind of confusing because it's actually um, winter hardy in zone five so it's really a perennial where I live but it just doesn't like the heat so when the full sun starts to come in it gets really hot then they start to fizzle a little bit but they will probably go dormant and reseed and I could get these every single year just by planting them this year so I'm actually going to put these ones in my cutting garden they grow 30 inches to 48 inches tall. So it's going to be perfect over there. I'll show you where I'm going to put them. Um, like I said, I'm not going to be planting any of these in the yard today. It's just to help you guys kind of plan a little bit and maybe you'll be interested in putting some of them in your own yard. So I don't actually have any white daisies in my yard and I don't actually want to put any in there, but I do love the looks of them. I think they're so pretty in everybody else's yard. So this is going to give me the daisy fill, but I like these ones a little bit better just because they're so dainty and I'm going to cut them and bring them inside and they can kind of go crazy in my cutting garden. I just walked back to my cutting garden area. I've been cleaning it out a little bit so I can prep and get it ready for some of these seeds. So my thoughts here with these cool season hardy annuals slash perennials, kind of what I want to call it. Um, so the dahlias are definitely ones that like the heat. They come out a little bit later. So I am in love with dahlias. They were actually one of the easier things to grow. I was so scared coming into it, but look at these. They are starting to take off. And this is definitely the latest blooming flowers I've had so far. I'm not gonna start my dahlias inside early. I'm just gonna bring them outside in the ground when it's warm enough. And then I can put my cold hardy seeds right here, take them out and then put some dahlias. These are definitely one of the annuals I'm gonna still be growing every single year. But look at how awesome they are doing now. I do not know what variety this is. I don't remember buying all of these orange ones, but look at that perfection. Absolutely beautiful. Um, the grasshopper recovery has been just great. This is why these ones are so little, because the grasshoppers and earwigs loved it. Um, you're welcome, grasshoppers and earwigs. I was just so happy to feed you, not. And then look at these crazy ones. Aren't those just nuts? They kind of remind me of octopuses in some sort of weird way. Or squid. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> some sort of creature. I can't really pinpoint what it is. Didn't stake them this year. They definitely need to be staked. So I think right here I might put the fever few. I definitely need to be patient with dahlias. They can really start a little bit later. I'm okay to wait until fall to really enjoy them, late summer to fall. Um, as long as I have something I can enjoy here all summer long, I don't care when. So right here I've been clearing it out a little bit. These were just a total flop. I was not happy with the carnations this year. I need something bigger and more abundant and they're just kind of a joke. They need their own little tiny spot, I guess. They do smell really good but I'm gonna probably put some more Larkspur right here so I can enjoy the blooms a little bit longer. I'm still gonna put it over there, but I'm gonna have to rip them out sooner for the vegetables. And then I need a whole row of dahlias. So I'll add some more dahlias right here. So this is a row of my snapdragons. There really aren't blooms at the moment. There are a few more trying to pop out, but they are supposed to be about 30 inches tall and they actually are. It doesn't look like right now, but I didn't do the proper staking or netting, whatever you wanna call it. So this is actually what they're supposed to look like. They're supposed to be up here. 
Look how beautiful and how much character those blooms have. Oh, princess, you always know when I'm doing a video, huh? <laughs> so I'm gonna just make sure I cover them with some straw, some mulch, something like that. But I think in the spring, I'll definitely, I'm gonna cut them down. I'm gonna add the netting. I have to say the number one mistake I made in my cutting garden this year was just not staking and netting like I should. It just is very important and a game changer. <laughs> Okay, I know I went on and on about seeds, but this is really fun. You can get succession planting. You can grow things that are easy in the fall and have beautiful blooms in the spring without doing a lot of effort. So it will be a great transition. You'll have those early spring to early summer flowers blooming. And then when they start to fade with the heat, then I can put my zinnias, my cosmos and dahlias in the ground. Sometimes it just takes a little thinking and experimentation. So this year was so great. I learned so much. I kind of learned what works for me, what I can and cannot handle. So I'm I'm really excited to put all these little seedlings in the ground. Make sure you stay tuned for that video. I'll show you how I plant them. This was just kind of a planning video, like I said, and I just had to end with this beautiful rose that I have behind me. Are you kidding me? Look at the way the sun is glowing on this rose. So I planted it this year and it is actually a six foot, no, five foot tall rose. I'm not gonna let it get that tall. I'm gonna actually cut this down and make it a little bit more bushy, but look, all the blooms are starting to come out. And it is just breathtaking and it smells so amazing. All of my roses are starting to pop out, but look at the sun on those dahlias. Oh, so much fun. I love this time of year. Actually, I love everything about gardening. I never want to stop. I forgot to add, just make sure you hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, um, so you are aware of that video. But I, so next year, I'm really excited. I think things are going to be so much prettier than they were this year. I have a better plan. So stay tuned for that. Follow along. If you have any questions, comment down below. This is so much fun for me. I'd love to answer any that you may have. I live in a zone 6B climate. It doesn't get a lot of humidity here. It's really hot and dry super bad drought this year all of my big mature trees were drying out which i've never seen and so it kind of gives you an idea of how well all these flowers are doing despite it anyways i will talk to you later and have a great day gardening bye